Coming up next, I'll tell you about the part of the job search that most don't think about. And ladies, listen, the key to your man's well-being might not be that surprising. We'll take your calls and your chats. I am coming to you live from Ramsey Studios in Nashville, and I am thrilled that you are here. You're joining a conversation about who you are, what you were created to do, where you can do it, and how you can get there. It's about working on purpose so that you're living your purpose. You were created to fill a unique role. That means you are really, really valuable. You're tremendously important. Somebody out there needs you to be you. And so that's the focus of the Ken Coleman Show. If you're new to the program, welcome. This isn't uh, political talk. This is all about purposeful talk. And it's about you. The show is all about you and your calls. So if you're new to the program and uh, or you, you're somewhat new and, and you've been watching, you got a question that's kind of burning in your chest, uh, you can call live right now. This isn't taped. This is live as you watch it. Now, people watch it all the time, all around the world on demand. But as I'm speaking to you and you're looking at your clock at it's 12 Eastern, 11 Central, we're live and you can call right now. The number is toll free, 844-747-2577, 844-747-2577. If you got a really simple, straightforward question, you can text it to us essentially in the chat room right next to the video window. And if you're enjoying the program now or throughout the program, would you think about giving us a thumbs up right below the video window, subscribing, and maybe even sharing today's episode or uh, one of our shorter clips here on our YouTube page? All of that helps us grow because YouTube pays attention to what people are watching. And uh, so we would be grateful for that. So the part of the job search that no one talks about, I think might be surprising. I think this is a really good article from Dawn Graham, uh, a clinical psychologist. Uh, she wrote this for Forbes magazine. And uh, we talk about this on the Ken Coleman show, but I love the way she couches it because you think about resume and getting prepared for the interview and uh, making connections, all the things that we teach here on the Ken Coleman show. However, uh, she makes a very good point that most job seekers don't prepare themselves for the emotional journey. So the way I would say this is, you can be uh, prepared. You've, you've got the qualifications. Uh, you've got the connections. you got the good resume. You, you, you're prepared for the interview, uh, or you will prepare. You know how to because we give you the how to win the interview guide. But if you don't have a mindset for what the process could involve, it can really make it tougher than it need be. So the idea is be prepared that this is going to be a roller coaster, even in the best of times. Because it's a highly competitive process. So it's a really good point. Now, she provides some great data in the interview that will help you get the right mindset. It's all about expectations. Listen to this. The average application to interview ratio is 20%. Do you hear that? So we're talking about the average is 20% on people they, they apply, they submit the application, and then they actually get an interview. It's 20%. You have a 20% chance. This is the average. So all of a sudden, if you apply and you don't get any feedback and no interview, you shouldn't be shocked. It, you're, you're operating on a 20% chance. It's like a 20% chance of rain. So you're not shocked if it doesn't rain. Okay? Moving on. Once you accept that the data says that it is even tougher for a second interview. Then you've got some great expectations. So uh, the, well, it's actually the same, 25% landing the job when called back for a second interview, about 25 to 50%. So this is landing the job. So you can get a second interview and you're about 25. Uh, sometimes it jumps up uh, with some different factors that I think just, kind of distract us here. It's really about 25% uh, that you're going to get the job even if you've had a second interview. And then this last piece of data, 250 applications are received for any advertised job. So on average, these are average numbers. When a job is open, you're going to get 250 applications, folks. So understand that this is going to be a roller coaster. 
And uh, this is why it's important you use the proximity principle. It's why you should use the web of connections that we teach. One, I got to give you one other piece of data here. Uh, the hiring process is not efficient. Uh, according to studies, that the applicant tracking systems uh, that companies use, which is where you submit your resume online, weed out up to 75% of applicants before they even get to a human. And then I'll give you some data from the show. We know this. The average hiring manager spending 7.4 seconds looking at your resume. So you see the odds? They're stacked against you. Here's the point of this. Steal your mind that this is going to be tough. It's going to be full of frustration and waiting and all the things. Rejection and frustration are a part of this process. And if you are aware of that and prepare yourself for it, it's not going to be as devastating. 844-747-2577. 844-747-2577. Susan is up first in Carson City, Nevada. Susan, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hi, Ken. Thanks Hi, for Susan. taking my call. Well, I'm happy to. What's going on? Well, um, so my job has been affected by COVID and I'm trying to figure out where my focus needs to be because I'm also trying to sort out my dream and build a bridge to it, but everything's a little hazy right now. Yeah. And then with COVID on top of it, it just, you know, throws that extra wrench into the game. Yeah. So what can I help you with specifically? So my job, so I'm the creative director for the Department of Tourism for the state of Nevada. Mm -hmm. And as you can imagine, that is um, yeah. been affected quite yeah. a lot. Yeah. So, <laughs> so we're on furloughs right now where we're only working part time. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to figure out how to best use my time because I want to pursue more um, design on my own. Mm -hmm. More, I love to write. Um, but I'm also, also wanting to be prepared in case I lose my job. So I guess I'm just trying to figure out because I'm trying to build that bridge, but it's still hazy as far as I don't even know quite the direction I'm completely aiming for. Yeah. Well, that's that the, that's the issue. Hazy. Well, that's what we got to <laughs> yeah. figure out. The bridge building takes place once we know where we're building a bridge to right now, we only know where we are and that's, you're on one side of the bank and we're trying to go, okay, which direction do I want to go? Uh, yes. And then and we build a bridge. So I think you have some ideas, but let's 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 dream a little bit more. I feel like you gave me a clue, but I want you to just dream for a second. I want you to sure. suspend your disbelief, right? <laughs> right. That's what they tell us um, when we go to the movie theater. Like this yes. is an action film that is going to be ridiculous. None of these stunts could ever happen in real life, but we want you to suspend disbelief uh, when you go see Star Wars, right? The people live in space. So let's suspend our disbelief and we just enjoy it. So suspend the disbelief that I don't know if I can get there or how I would get there. I want you to dream 10 years, 15 years, 20 years from now. Where are you? What are you doing? Um, I'm traveling and I'm writing for sure. Writing what? Um, Writing stories, uh, novels, and even writing um, about my process. Okay, so the dream is yeah. to be a professional writer. You're self-sustained because you're making money yes. writing books and writing about writing. So you're kind of a you're 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 one part novelist, one part expert on the writing business, the art of writing. Yes, the art of writing, and in that because I do love parts of my job with design. Not only am I writing books, but I'm creating art for those books. Okay, great. So here's the deal. In order for that to be true, what must you do? That becomes the question. Now, <laughs> yes. now, now here's the deal. I'm going to give you my advice on this, but it's not, it's not as hard to figure out this answer. You could figure it out, right? So what has to yeah. happen? Well, at some point, you're going to have to start writing, like for real, and show your work. Because the only and way to get better is to actually start performing. And, and again, I've been here, Susan. Listen, um, I'm very candid about this. Um, I hope nobody goes and... You know what? Actually, Joe, I, I, I'm going to get really vulnerable for Susan and the rest of the audience. Uh, Susan, you should go back to, to 2017 when you get a chance. Mm -hmm. And I want, you to go, I want you to go to our podcast, The Ken Coleman Show, and go all the way back to 2017 when I started. They're all on there, right, Joe? Oh, yeah. Now, I want you to listen to how I dealt with callers. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Susan, I was figuring it out. Now, I knew my methodology. 
I knew my philosophy and all the things I say now, but I, I didn't have any experience doing it on the air in short form. I had no experience at all, but I knew that mm-hmm. I wanted to do it. And I'm still getting better every day now. But the point is, is I had not taken a lot of calls. Therefore, I didn't know all the signals to listen for. And I was kind of doing the same thing with every caller. And I was really trying to find my sea legs. Joe, it's night and day. It was quite an evolution. Yeah. So, but here's the point, Susan. I'm not talking about bragging about how I've gotten better. What I'm saying is I had to start off and be awful. I I had to Mm -hmm. suck. (laughs) Right, And I'm not saying you're going to suck, but I'm saying when you start writing your first novel now, you will suck compared to where you will be five years from now. Do you agree with that? Oh, completely. So you got to start now, which means you got to have a day job. So really the bridge becomes, how do I do work that I really enjoy, which is design work? So that's still in your sweet spot. And you actually, mm-hmm. you know, you will continue to use that, but you've got to get a You've got to get more healthy and maybe get out of the state tourism side of things and maybe go private sector, but you've got to get a design job uh, or a writing slash design job, and that keeps you stable in the day job. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but I would say for you, it's not a true day job. It's actually in your sweet spot. You really enjoy it. And you're writing on the side. Maybe you start with short stories. Maybe, maybe you take your first pass on a novel and see if you can self-publish it building your audience you've got to build 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 you see what i'm saying so this is a five to ten year journey i want to be realistic with you now you may beat that timeline but you better start with that in mind that it's going to take that amount of time for you to get to a place where you can be self-sustaining as a writer yeah no that's i think i think um knowing that it's taking time but then having my own my existing day job being unstable is where I kind of got thrown off. Yep. I get it. So you know? here's the deal. So only focus on, Oh, wait a second. The bridge is just stable day job. That's the bridge. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, it's a little bridge. It, it, it's like the foot bridge. Okay. Yeah. I got to get stable. Cause when I'm stable, my mind is in a place where I can create better. Right. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then no, we start completely. then we start writing. And so the longer bridge is writing short stories, playing out the first novel, studying a bunch of writers, immersing yourself in a writing class, all the things that I had to do in broadcasting. The journey is very similar, by the way. Yeah. I just had to get on radio. I I, I had to go do Saturday radio at two o'clock and pay my way on. I had to pay a thousand bucks a month to suck. <laughs> all right. Yeah. But that's the deal. Okay. That's the price yeah. of admission. So you don't actually need any steps from me. You just need a perspective, and I just gave it to you. So let's replace the current yes. job, and let's keep on moving. And I'm so excited to see what you're going to do. Uh, and this is the part of the show that I love the most. I really believe in you, Susan. And I'm hoping one day you send me a, a novel that you published or that somebody else published. I hope that you call in and we do a dream scream. Because that's what this is about. This is about helping you get clear so you can see where you want to be and how you can get there. I mean, that's half the battle. So thankful for Susan, for her trusting the show and calling in and sharing. I think that's going to inspire a lot of people. Sioux Falls, South Dakota is where we go next. Cole is on the line. Cole, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hello, how are you? Cole, I am living the dream. What's up? I um, just have a question about job interviewing skills. I'm actually just wondering how I can make myself stand out. I had a job interview back in February, and it did not go as how I wanted it to. I did not get the job, unfortunately. It's uh, one of those where you can only interview once a year, so I'm just wondering how I can prepare myself for next time again, which would be next February. Um, I just graduated college. And my GPA was okay. Um, I had a few rough semesters, so I'm thinking that that's what they looked at overall. Um, but my major GPA was pretty good. So just wondering if you have any advice for me. So this is a thing you can. This is the only thing you want to do or can do, and you're you struck out, so you can't even reapply till 2021. That's correct. It's for a police officer position. Ah, uh, okay. And how many interviews did you have? Just one. Okay. 
Well, and you're how old? I'm 24. 24. Okay. Um, all right. Well, be encouraged uh, that you know you can you can uh, do things to stand out. But you know, we actually let, let off the show today on the data uh, on on getting hired, and you're also in a very competitive profession, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you know, you're looking at the chances of you getting the job. You know, are in that twenty to probably thirty percent. So the way that you're gonna get the gig is you're gonna have to really focus on connections. I I think qualifications matter, but qualifications are a baseline, and you don't stand out if all you're focusing on is well, I'm qualified. Right. The way you're gonna stand out is connections, and I I hate to oversimplify it, but it's really the truth. Um, I'm going to give you a copy of my best-selling book, The Proximity Principle, because you've got to read that through and through. And okay. you actually start working it, okay? Uh, this is, there's five people and five places that we spend a lot of time on, and then we then we focus on practices in the last section of the book. People, places, practices. And so, Cole, right. Cole, I don't know if you've heard me talk about The Proximity Principle, and I'm not talking about the book, I'm talking about the actual principle. The principle says, in order for Cole to do what he wants to do, He's got to be around people that are doing it and in places where it is happening. So let's apply this directly to you. In order for Cole to be a police officer, a law enforcement officer, he's got to be around police, sheriffs. He's got to be in places where those folks are happening. So whether you're volunteering for their associations, uh, their meetings or whatever, uh, you know, whatever you can do, you know, or you're volunteering at the police station. Uh, or you're showing up for their charity events and doing stuff and making connections. Do you understand what I mean by places when I give you those couple of ideas? I sure do. Of course you do. See, Cole, here's the deal. You're 24, and your GPA won't matter if the players in the police department or in the sheriff's department get to know you, and they realize that you're passionate about the profession and that you're hungry and humble. You're willing to do whatever it takes. And so I would be looking for opportunities to volunteer, again, where they're working, get involved in their charity things, and be visible, and sit down with these men and women and say, hey, I want to do what you do. What advice would you give me on how to, and and don't just say, hook me up. That's not what, they, they don't need to hear that. They need to know that you want to sit down with them and buy their lunch, buy them coffee, or buy them a donut and go, hey, how'd you get where you are? What's the key to being a great law enforcement officer? What are you worried about? Um, what do you need to protect yourself from? What's your position on all this, you know, where we've got some systemic issues going on? We've got good cops, bad cops. Every industry has good fruit and bad fruit. Every industry, not just police. You know, really dive into all this. And when you right. do that, you're going to develop relationships. And now these relationships are going to, next time you apply, they go, hey, uh, I know this kid, Cole. Great kid. Love to mentor him. Think we need to put him in there. Do you see how that makes you rise out of the pile of applicants? Do you see how that works? I sure do. Yep. You got this, man. That's how you prepare. Now, one other thing I want you to do. Um, I'm about to put you on hold. Madison's going to get you a copy of the book, The Proximity Principle. I want you to read it, and I want you to do it. But I also want you to go to KenColeman.com right now. And I want you to download the resume guide and the how to win the interview guide. They're free. These are part of our get hired guides. And I want you to digest and do. All right. And you're going to get there. I promise, Cole. Thank you for the call. Hang on the line. Madison will take care of you. 844-747-2577. 844-747-2577. Okay. Ladies, 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 listen to me. Uh, the latest show demographics we have is that we're about 60% of our audience are women. And uh, we get increasingly, we get more and more calls where women are calling on behalf of their hubs. We have it all the time, and I love it. Um, and in some cases, it's the, the hubs is working, so they can't call. But let me just tell you something, Joe. We've said this before. Um, dudes are just not as willing to be transparent and talk. And women are amazing that way. And guys, we need to follow the lead of the ladies. 
because they're they're much braver when it comes to just being transparent and vulnerable. They just are. It's a fact. This isn't my opinion. Um, however, I still love the fact that if your man won't call the show and he won't own it, you calling and trying to nudge him, I love that. All right, so now here's the deal. So this is for ladies that got a fella in their life that isn't happy at work. We're going to discuss something a little bit later in the program, about five minutes or so. And you've got to pay attention to this. So this is really, really good data. And I think it will encourage you. And I want you to pass this on to your man. Ideally, uh, you can fast forward to this part of the program. About 20 minutes, uh, well, 12, 25 minutes in uh, is where we're going to land. And make them watch it. All right? And, and, and it'll do you a favor. So I'm here for you. All right? That's coming up in about five minutes or less. All right, to the chat room we go. Chris says, hey, Ken, your resume template includes a link for a LinkedIn profile. What should my LinkedIn profile look like? A resume? Should this be a general resume? No one geared, not one geared towards a specific job. Yeah, your LinkedIn profile is not a resume. Uh, and the LinkedIn profile, they again, they give you all the stuff. So fill out the stuff. Um, uh, and I haven't written an article on this or I would I would recommend it, but I'll bet you there's no less than 30 articles online on how to create a winning LinkedIn profile. Somebody's done that. Go read three or five and take the average of everything you learn. They're probably going to be very similar and do what they say. Uh, Corey writes in, what do I do when my sweet spot is not making enough to allow me to obtain my financial goals? Mm. Well, this is one where I wish you'd call the show. So Corey, if you're if you submitted this and, and you want to call in, I want to know the details. Because any advice I give on this is extremely limited. I don't know what your sweet spot is. I don't know what role you're in. Um, I don't know the industry. I don't know enough to give you a guided answer here. But I would say that uh, on the surface, I really believe that if you're in your sweet spot, you can make enough money. Now, your financial goals may need to be adjusted to the reality of, uh, of your situation. Let me give you an example. So teachers, teachers don't make a lot of money. They don't make a lot of money. Um, uh, you know what, uh, uh, Madison, do me a favor. Look up real quick while I'm, I'm answering this question. If you can see what the median salary is for a teacher in the United States, that's probably online. I'm, I'm guessing it's 50 to 60 grand median. It may be high 40s. But Mass is going to check me on this. All right, now here's the deal. Let's take the teacher for an example while she's looking that up. So we know from Chris Hogan's, uh, who's a Ramsey personality, my colleague, his Everyday Millionaire book and study of over 10,000 net worth millionaires. I've mentioned this before in the program. That the number three group, the largest, third largest group of millionaires in the United States are teachers. They're not making a ton of money. Well, so they would have to adjust their financial goals to their financial reality. So you're going to have to do that. Okay. And again, I don't know what you're doing and what role you're in, but I'm telling you that at some point teachers went, oh, well, I can't make 200 grand a year, but I can be a net worth millionaire. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to save a lot of money. I'm going to live on less than I make and I'm going to invest my money. And over time, I will eventually be really, really wealthy. So they've adjusted their goals, but they've still managed to stay in their sweet spot. I think that's the answer. Madison, what'd you find? I am seeing that the median salary in 2018 yeah. was 60000 Okay, good. So I was close. I, I said 50 to 60 was my guess, and that's I was a little fuzzy, so thank you for helping me on that. That's of high school, to clarify. That's right. So, oh, okay. So, so, oh, so is there a- I couldn't find anything for younger, but high school was the first thing I saw. This is from U.S. News. Yeah, I yeah. So, but my point holds, you know. So we're talking about fifty, sixty. So that's not a ton of money, and they're still becoming millionaires. So, uh, Madison, thank you for that. Uh, I love to be able to pull data for you folks. Sometimes I'm fuzzy. I, I remember things. I read a ton of stuff, and sometimes I, I I can remember. So that's good. That's good. Um, so there you go. All right. Uh, you can submit your chat questions anytime, and we try to catalog those even if you're not watching uh, live. Uh, feel free to submit those chat questions, and we try to get those in there. All right. Uh, we are going to move to the teaching, and I, and I tease this. So, ladies, if you got a fella who's not happy in their work, I'll bet he's not very happy at home. This is not a surprise. This is not breaking news. 
So which is the issue? Is it because he's not happy at home? Could be. But the data says otherwise. Let's dive in. Uh, I love this. This is so good. Uh, the University of, uh, excuse me, University College of London uh, psychologist John Barry, who's the co-founder of the British Psychological Society, partnered with Harry's, which is a, a men's products uh, company, and they came up with a report, and they surveyed 5,000 men on this report, and American men, okay? And they were asked about happiness, confidence, emotional stability, motivation, optimism. And uh, then they were asked about how satisfied they were with their careers, their relationships, their money, physicality, mental health, and just generally the values that matter most to them. Okay, so that's the setup. All right, that's what they talked to them about. And there was a gigantic trend that said the strongest predictor of men's happiness and well-being is their job satisfaction. Let me say that again. The strongest predictor of a man's happiness and his well-being is their job satisfaction. I want to pause for a minute. Uh, I want to look and see if there's been a study that's similar, that comes up with a similar finding for women, because I I don't think this is a male-female issue. However, the studies there... And because men are not as willing to be vulnerable and transparent, they're stuffing this crap instead of dealing with it. And that's why we're here, to help you and your man, right? Help everybody. I want to help everybody. Now, I, I you know, again, this is what I preach. So this is not just a man thing, all right? So I've qualified that. Uh, this is a direct quote from uh, the psychologist John Barry. Men who have high job satisfaction are very likely to be content in other aspects of their life. Duh. Yeah, I knew this, but I'm so glad um, that they found this. He goes on to say men at work are more likely to be men at ease with themselves. Everything else, contentment at home, in relationships and friendships, flows down from men being satisfied at work. Now, again, this gets back to the point that you got to have two things happening here. A, you got to be in your sweet spot, men. Ladies, your man's got to be in his sweet spot. The intersection of what he does best, talent, the work he loves to do most, passion, the results of his work that matters most. Mission. Talent, passion, mission, intersecting. That's your sweet spot. That's where the role that you were created to fill exists. And you can do that in multiple jobs. So understand when I say role and jobs, two different things here. The role is I play the role of counselor. I play the role of facilitator. I play the role of teacher. I play the role of leader, whatever it is. That's the role. And I can do that in multiple jobs, multiple career paths. So understand that that's item A. Item B is he does it in a place where he is valued. So healthy culture. So you've got to be in your sweet spot performing your unique role in a healthy culture bing that's it now that helps it doesn't mean that there will be no relationship issues or anything else but it is a massive massive factor in him being the man that he needs to be for you to be the husband he needs to be the father he needs to be and and be in a place where he's much healthier and that helps the whole house so there it is pretty simple stuff so all that to say that's why I do what I do for women and for men. But ladies, you got an unhappy dude in your house, start showing him the program. Have him listen to the podcast on his way to work. Send him an article or two. Get the proximity principle for him. Have him call in the program or listen first and then maybe he calls in. Put him on the phone with you. We did that once or twice, haven't we, Joe, in the history of the show? I think we had a couple couples that were on at the same time. That was kind of fun. Let's go. What are we waiting on? Life's too short to be stuck in a dead end job. 844-747-2577 is the number. Okay, a uh, couple things. Great deals right now at KenColeman.com. Okay, two specific items in the store. Number one, the proximity principle, which is the best selling book based on the principle that says, in order to do what you want to do, 
You've got to be around people that are doing it and in places where it is happening. That's where Opportunity Lives. It's the best selling book, three formats hard copy, ebook, audiobook, all three, $25. That's a crazy deal. And you can only get it at kencoma.com, and I autograph the hard copy. And then our Get Higher Digital course, good job numbers today, Joe. Really good job numbers, okay? However, now you got states starting to shut down again. I have no idea, nor am I ever, 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 ever again going to pontificate on corona. It's not good for my blood pressure, turns out. Uh, so we don't know what those job numbers are going to do. But the fact of the matter is there's still millions and millions and millions of people. We think we're at about 11.1% unemployment right now. That's still pretty high. So it's super competitive. The Get Higher Digital course is an 11 video series, uh, 11 part uh, video series where I give you the edge and it's only 20 bucks right now. It'll eventually go up in price. Right now it's at the introductory price of $19.99, really. KenColeman.com. Go get both of those products. Those are great for you and for others, so go get them. All right, back to the phones we go. 844-747-2577. By the way, you know what? I will forget to do this, Joe, if I don't do it. And Nathan did not know I was going to do this. Nobody knows I'm going to do this. But I'm feeling very patriotic today. And uh, so gonna 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 be off tomorrow, you know, uh, July 4 weekend. Yes. So I prepared my patriotic outfit a few days ago. And I don't think none of you have seen it. Um, that is correct. You haven't seen it. No. So uh, what I'm going to do is, I haven't done this before, I'm just trying to su support patriotism. So I've got the, the red... Uh, polo shirt on i've got the dark jeans and uh then look at look at the loafers look, oh my goodness the red the red sperry's with the navy blue heel very nice sir i'm a little proud of it never one to miss an opportunity to make a fashion statement well this is true Glad this is true i don't talk about clothes much with the audience but i do enjoy a great outfit and uh so what do you think of the shoes nathan you like them? All right. The, yeah, see like the little, them. the red shoe with the blue heel? Uh, good detail. I don't know. if Did everybody see it? Yeah. All right. Because I'll stand up again. You know I will. <laughs> no, you're good. I kid. Joe's rocking his Alabama hat today because, after all, Crimson Tide fans, Madison, think Yuck. that they're being patriotic when they wear their colors. All right. Well, now. Alabama is its own country. <laughs> oh, boy. Now, don't make all the Alabama listeners angry, Madison. I'm allowed to say that. I lived there for three years. That is true. She did. She did. And and know that Madison is not objective at all. She's completely biased because she's a Georgia fan. So I want 100%. to put that out there that uh, she and Joe have got a little rivalry going on. And poor Nathan is only a NFL fan and he likes the Vikings. So <laughs> he, that guy can't even enter into our conversations. <laughs> he doesn't even know the joy that is college football. But we're trying to help him maybe adopt a team or something. And, and we'll see how that goes as we hopefully play football in the fall. All right. Uh, now that I got that out of the way, I feel really good about it. I feel really good about that. Uh, so I uh, just wanted to show people I'm trying to do my part and uh, feeling very July 4th-y. I just made up a condition. July 4th-y. So there you go. All right. Samantha's up next in Galveston, Texas. Samantha, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hi, Ken. Thanks for taking my call. You bet. How can I help? Um, my husband and I just recently moved to the Galveston area um, about a week and a half before Corona really happened and the pandemic really took a hold of everything. Mm -hmm. um, we both accepted new positions in the area, um, better pay, better opportunity, lower cost of living. We moved from Colorado and we're really excited about the opportunity. The pandemic happened and he, my husband was furloughed, I was kind of put on a, we don't know if we're going to be able to bring you on. Oh, no. um, yeah. So we've been okay. We, we are in a pretty secure fine, not secure. I mean, we're, we're okay financially. Mm -hmm. Um, I am collecting unemployment, but I listen to a lot of podcasts. Um, I'm highly motivated and I hear a lot of really successful people find themselves on their journey at, at a moment when they're like, yeah. oh my gosh, this happened. And then I diverted and I changed directions and I fell into something that I loved. Yeah. And 
I'm, I just don't know where to aim my focus. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, let me correct one I'm, thing. They did not fall into anything. They stepped into it. And so I want you mm-hmm. to have some real purpose here. Um, and I want you to change your, your wording there and say they, those people stepped into something because what they did in those moments of, of, of adversity, let's call it a valley that you're in right now. What do you do when you're in the valley? You look up. You look mm-hmm. around. How do I get out of this valley? And I think that's where it is right now. So I'm glad you called. Let's 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 try to rock this really quickly. And I'm going to give you some resources if necessary. But what would you do if if money wasn't an issue? Can you suspend disbelief and just say, Ken, this is what I've always wondered about, but I'm just not quite sure how to get there. Or what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? And I put you in there tomorrow, and it was an adventure. You tried it. You didn't even have to commit to it. It's on a 30 year play. It's a huh. Ken's guaranteeing me my salary plus plus and I can't fail. Huh. I think I'll try this. What's the answer to that question? I don't I don't have a specific job. I don't know. I okay, mean, hold on, I have hold a on. Lot of- there we go. Right there. Don't say specific. See, I don't want job title. That's get that hangs people up. Just tell me the work that you would do. Forget about title. What would you do? People. I mean, I, I enjoy people. I'm a people person. I'm in, I'm into fitness. I'm into the gym. I like how, um, you're like, you broke up. You like helping who? I like helping people. Yeah. Okay. So stop around people. So that's perfect. So let's go to mission. So I teach talent, passion, mission. That's what you have to get clear on in the get clear stage. So what does Samantha do better than anything else? Okay. Uh, Just your top Hard skills, soft skills. We'll get to that in a moment because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reverse this process for you. Then we look at what work does Samantha have high emotion and devotion for? Meaning you get excited when you think about it. You love it when you're in the middle of it and time disappears. It's like you don't even want to stop. And then the third indicator is mission. Results of my work that matter deeply to me. And you just started on the questions within mission who are the people you most want to help samantha think about them for a moment don't say anything just think about them who do you want to help what problem or challenge or need or want do they have and then what are the solutions or what is the solution to that challenge that need that want that you get excited about offering the answer lies in those three questions so let's take a stab at it meaning not holding you to this who are the people you most want to help say it um you just gave yourself some clues earlier who do you want to help probably people that need a little bit of like health direction yes i love it samantha breakthroughs coming all right specifically what problem what challenge what needs because that's a broad brush which is good just better health now what specific areas of their health do you get pretty excited about you you go oh that's a problem i want to dig into fitness and nutrition boom look what's happening samantha watch out now then what's the solution or solutions to their fitness and nutrition that you go if i was providing this solution or these solutions to their health and nutrition, and I did that and I got paid for it, I would be over the moon, say it. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Well, then there's your homework. Okay? So it's not an unanswerable question. I'm not going to put you on the spot on the air. Okay? Is this a high-pressure situation? Uh, It feels like it. It's not. I want you to answer that third question. So, for instance, I'll give you some examples. Would you be a nutrition therapist? Would you be uh, a nutrition coach? Would you be an overall health coach? Would you be a physical trainer? Um, Well, you know, in my career, I'm a physical therapist. Great, and I so I I thought that that was my my place. That was the way that I could. What if it is? What if it's one of the things you could do in your sweet spot? Remember, this is what I believe, Samantha. That it's not just one job, not just one career path. So, so being a physical therapist does those very things. But it doesn't limit you to just being a physical therapist. But maybe you weren't in a great environment. And you could be in your sweet spot in a bad environment and not want to come in. You could be kicked out of the nest. 
did you come to uh, Texas for a physical therapist job? I did. Yeah, but just because you got kicked out of the nest because of COVID doesn't mean that that changes your whole direction. Right, and that's where I was unsure. You know, do I do I veer off? No. Is this like a moment where I'm like, oh, I need to go down a different path? Um, it, there's a difference between veering off and going down a different path. Uh, so I, I know this is semantics, but I'm trying to help you see the difference. Maybe mm-hmm. it's not physical therapy, and maybe you get into becoming a physical trainer, uh, exercise scientist. Mm-hmm. I don't know. My point is that's right. a different path, but it's not a veer off. Like you're still in the space of wellness. Can we at least say that, right? Health and wellness. Absolutely. And right. and and the role that you love is probably the hands-on guide. If you're going to pick one word to describe you as a health and wellness expert who helps people, what would be the word you would choose to describe yourself to kind of define what you're doing all day? Passionate. Okay, that's an adjective. I'm saying the word itself, describing your role. Are you the role of guide? Are you the role of fixer? Are you see what I'm saying? How would you describe what yeah. you do with a patient? Yeah, I'm a I'm a fixer. Perfect. So I'm just mm-hmm. trying to give you this freedom to go, okay, A, I don't need to switch gears just because I got kicked out of the nest, or I mean veer off course. I just need to recalibrate and go, do I want to stay in physical therapy? If the answer is yes, then do it. But if you want to add in some nutrition stuff, add that skill set. So I, I understand why you're questioning everything because it's like, whoa, I just got kicked in the head and now it's making me rethink everything, which is a good exercise, but I don't want you to have any more doubt about your sweet spot and your unique role. I think you're doing exactly what you were created to do. You just got to reload. That makes me feel better. Yeah. Good for you. I spent a lot of time just, am I doing the right thing? Is this where I need to be? Um, well, should I be focusing my energy elsewhere no you focus your energy on a new opportunity that's it you're in your sweet spot you're using what you do best as a physical therapist you use your top talents to do work you love passion to produce a result that matters deeply to you yes or no true then there you go yes be free you're clear now refocus on the next opportunity all right folks our time is almost up but Real quick, before I let you go, you matter. You do have what it takes. Thank you for joining us. Until next time, this is The Ken Coleman Show.